impulse commutation is a method of forced commutation here we are seeing a circuit of a uh, impulse commutation method the thyristor t1 is called the main thyristor because this main thyristor supplies the necessary load current to the load resistor the supply voltage or the dc input voltage is vs other than this t1 we have two more thyristors t2 and t3 along with a capacitor c and an inductor l parallel to the load there is a freewheeling diode dm now let's check how this impulse commutation is working the thyristor t1 is carrying the load current im now when we want to commute this thyristor t1 what we do is we will fire the thyristor t2 when thyristor t2 is fired the positive plate of the capacitor c will supply a positive voltage at the cathode of the thyristor t1 this is because the capacitor c is previously charged to a voltage minus v0 now what happens is when this negative voltage appears across the cathode the thyristor t1 is commuted just because t1 is commuted the load current will not become zero because now t2 is closed and it is acting as a closed switch the capacitor will discharge through t2 and it will give the necessary load current the capacitor will discharge from minus v0 to zero then the capacitor will charge to vs taking current from this dc source vs when the capacitor discharges from minus v0 to zero the capacitor current falls to zero this commutes the thyristor t2 now thyristor t2 is commuted because the voltage across the capacitor becomes zero from minus v0 and the current through the thyristor stops to flow after this thyristor t3 is fired when t3 is fired current will flow through t3 through this inductor and it will make the polarity of this vs to minus vs when the thyristor t2 was fired the polarity of the capacitor plate was as shown in this figure with the lower plate positive and the upper plate negative giving a voltage minus v0 the capacitor will discharge from minus v0 to zero thereafter it will charge to a voltage vs with the upper plate positive and the lower plate negative so this vc the capacitor voltage will become v yes which is the voltage of the source now what we have done is we have fired the thyristor t3 when t3 is fired current will flow through t3 through the inductor and it will reverse the polarity of this capacitor to minus vs when this becomes minus vs t3 is commuted due to self commutation so these are the events that is happening in impulse commutation now we need to specify certain terms associated with this impulse commutation the first one is circuit turn off time or the available turn off time represented by t off the circuit current which is the current through the load resistor will not go to zero suddenly just because t1 is turned off t1 is the main thyristor this is because the capacitor will supply the load current after t1 is switched off the load current will flow till the capacitor discharges from the value minus v0 to zero this time the time required by the capacitor to discharge from minus v0 to zero volt is called the circuit turn off time or the available turn off time clearly this turn off time should be greater than the turn off time of the thyristor otherwise the circuit will not work let's find out an expression for this available turn off time or the circuit turn off time assuming that uh, we have a constant load current im we may write 
the output voltage vo as 1 by c integral 0 to t of which is the circuit turn of time i m dt i m is the load current we will get it as i m t of by c from this we get the value of t of the circuit turn of time as v0 c by i m from this we see that the turn of time is inversely proportional to the load current we shall check what are the voltages across the capacitor and the main thyristor t1 during the uh, commutation process let's first check the capacitor voltage the capacitor had a voltage minus v0 till t2 was fired when t2 is fired the capacitor voltage changes from minus v0 to zero this is the discharging phase and thereafter it charges to the external dc voltage vs thereafter it remains constant at the same time what happens to the thyristor the thyristor is our main thyristor t1 for thyristor t1 till the thyristor t2 was fired there was no voltage drop because t1 was conducting there is no voltage drop across t1 till t2 was fired when t2 was fired the voltage across the thyristor becomes the voltage of the capacitor which was minus v0 so this is an instant when the thyristor t1 receives the negative voltage minus v0 thereafter the thyristor voltage or the main thyristor voltage t1 is equal to the voltage of the capacitor the capacitor voltage changes from minus v0 to zero at the same time the thyristor voltage changes from minus v0 to zero then the capacitor voltage goes to vs following that the thyristor t1 also gets a voltage vs there are certain other names for this commutation this commutation is otherwise called voltage commutation why the reason is since a reverse voltage is applied across the main thyristor t1 to commute it the commutation is called voltage commutation it is also called an auxiliary commutation the use of an auxiliary thyristor which is t2 to commute the main thyristor t1 this commutation method is an example of load side commutation as the capacitor comes in series with the load resistor the discharging of the capacitor is done through the load resistor in fact we know that the capacitor supplies the necessary load current when uh, t1 is commuted as the performance of the circuit depends on the load resistor it cannot be tested without connecting the load resistor so the commutation is called a load side commutation so you cannot test this circuit without connecting a load therefore commutation is otherwise called load side commutation finally let's think a method to increase the performance of this particular commutation method sometimes it so happens that the load resistor is very high value then the load current will decrease the load current im will be of a very small value and that increases the t of or the turn off time of the circuit so the turn off time may get unnecessarily along it due to the high value of the load resistor this problem uh, can be handled with the use of a special circuit as shown in the figure the circuit consists of a diode d1 and an inductor l1 which is connected across the main thyristor t1 the resistance is very high the current will choose the ec path d1 and l1 and the turn off time t of will be limited to a small value 